What is going on beautiful people? This right here is my ecosystem aquarium that's been running for like a whole year now without a single water change. It's been absolutely brilliant. I've learned so much from it, but it is definitely time for something new. So some really key points I learned about the tank was that you don't need crazy complicated filtration systems if you're gonna go for a heavy planting and a deep substrate system. The foreground makes it look like it's not too deep, but as you get further at the back there, it actually comes all the way up the back of the tank up to like that height. It dips down in the middle and back up again. You know, I learned, like, this is the first time I've ever done that, like big style, and it worked a treat. Because as you can see here, look, all the plants, crazy healthy. Um, there was a little algae bloom, but that all cleared itself up. And I didn't actually put any of this moss here, but it's just done its thing. And because it was an ecosystem tank, I wanted to let it do that. That's not quite the same as what I'm gonna be going for next though, because I'm now wanting to make an angelfish aquarium that really does showcase the fish, which means I don't want everything everywhere like we've sort of currently got. I wanna have quite a bit of negative space in the aquarium with really good sort of growth areas at each side. And then that middle area will be open and really show off the fish, hopefully. I'm saying hopefully because I know how bad I am at this and then start thinking, oh, there's a space there, put plants in it. I will resist the temptation to do that for sure. Job number one though is gonna to be to get absolutely everything out, get the plants off, these potted plants that we've got either side. I wanna put those back. Um, I wanna remove that wood. That's gonna come off completely, I think. Mm, does it? Yeah, it does, because I wanna add a uh, misted background or frosted background to this tank. At the moment, there isn't one. You can see it's quite dull in that back area, but we're gonna be showing a lot more of the back, so I want it brighter. And next to that tank here, you see, we've got the African Aquarium, and if I come down, adjust the lighting properly, you can see it looks way better at the background with that sort of brightness of the light, like reflecting off of it. That's got a misted background, that one hasn't and is way darker. So yeah, everything out of the tank, plants down, wood needs to come down as well. I can then flip the whole thing round and put on that uh, frosted background. The reason I wanna flip it round rather than just putting it on the front and spinning it is I know there's no scratches on the front, but I think there are some on the back. So definitely wanna frost the back. <laughs> Right, that's all the wood out. Most of the plants, we've drained it right down. Left a little bit there, obviously, because we've still got the fish in the foreground area there. And whilst I've been doing this, I've had some awesome news. Matt has just messaged me from Maidenhead Aquatics and sent me a picture of the angels. The angels are in, look at them. They've got that blue thing. Oh my God, I can't wait to pick them up. It looks so good. But before that, we need to build up a tank. If you guys remember, I put some coolie loaches in here. I'm now seeing them for like the first time in months and months and months. Here we go, look, where you gone, where you gone? There you are. Eee, water snakes, <laughs> pretty cool, aren't they? Yeah, I, haven't, I didn't even know they were still in there. Um, to be honest, that's because we've had so much sort of undergrowth that, or like stuff in the foreground. There's so many places for them to hide that the chances of seeing them was obviously gonna be so low. But yeah, looking fat and chunky now, aren't you? Sorry, that, that's not, that could be offensive. I'm sorry I said that. You're curvy, love you, love you. Woohoo, the tank is clean. Now, for those of you wondering what behind the scenes looks like after you do a big tank like this, let me turn around for you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite messy. You know, we've got a hardscape down there. We've got all the substrate in there. We've got the plants, we've got that wood, water things, shop vacs, uh, the fish are currently in there, but I'm gonna move them to something bigger shortly. Now, the temptation could be just to crack on because we're at that exciting point. We've just done the boring part of cleaning it all out, but if you take a little bit of time out now, just to get yourself a bit more organized, get your stuff all sort of tidied up a little bit more, you'll probably enjoy the next part of the process way more. I used to just crack on and just tied up at the end, but I found now that you can be rushing because you know you've got other jobs and just take your time with it and enjoy the process. That's the best advice I can give when you're doing a big tank or even any small tank because even the little ones can sometimes cause one hell of a mess. So the lighting on the tank is the same that I had on there before actually, is these budget LED strips. I have found that I need two of them uh, over time. Like initially one is pretty good and eventually you need two just to keep, keep that sort of growth going like and brighten up the whole thing when there's lots of stem plants everywhere. So yeah, over here in the uh, rare fish aquarium, the rare nano fish aquarium, I've got two as well, you see, and it just works brilliantly. Grows plants great. You can get a little bit of algae to start with, but it should be not a problem in this new tank and I'll tell you why. So I wanna get like a really good backlight feature 
and for that I've put one of the lights right at the very back of the tank, like as far back as it can go almost. And what that's done is highlight the back wall massively, so I don't think I need to put in a, a film over the back at all. There's no pipes going to be coming down from it, so it doesn't need to hide any of that. It's just going to look like that, which I think looks great. And that means we can now get started with the hardscape, which I'm well excited for, and I'm going to just put back in all that stuff that I just took out. <laughs> Seems pointless, right, but I got to clean it and all the gunk got hoovered up so we're just left with pretty much the gravel and aquasol mixed together i need a big section over here i want to create like this weird sort of downward moving sticky thing do you know what i mean over into this area and then a smaller one over here like very small so dual island kind of like what i had before but i had the wood everywhere didn't i i don't want that this time i want all of it pretty much coming from one way a little bit of detail in that bottom corner and that should leave this middle section completely open or open apart from you know a few sticks we'll see we'll see how it goes it's good to have like a rough idea when you're doing this but you don't have to stick to it exactly look at my hand just creeping in here la 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 <laughs> Now obviously there's all sorts of like roots and things you can see and amongst this it won't hurt at all it's all going to add to the nutrition content nutrient content i mean <laughs> nutrition nutrition content Nut yeah anyway it's all going to add to it you see there's all the aquasol and that in there as well fantastic start there now if you're wondering if this is any sort of special i don't know like substrate or system or something it's not this is just like gravel from my driveway the big bits are the smaller bits are just some decorative sand and the darker bits are some aquasol. All mixed together, it seems to make a really good base for beneficial bacteria to colonize, but also water can still sort of flow through it, if you like, because water's still even flowing through your substrate system and it stops you getting like stagnated points and things like that. So yeah, if you can't afford the really expensive systems, then this is a really good way of doing it. It's not as good, but it works well, as you've seen from the results at the start of the video. <laughs> So that's the rough composition that I want to go for just initially. I've banked it higher than it probably, no, it probably will be that high. Um, I now want to put some stones in front of it to act as a retaining wall over to that section and then that one as well. And then I can fill in the gaps by bringing this forward and then add more on top or whatever. Just see how, how it looks, you know, until you get the rocks and you don't know. And I'm not going to reuse these rocks. This is the rhino stone. Two reasons. One, I don't think I've got enough here. This is all I've got. So I think I can use those in a future scape. I am going to use the uh, manzanita wood though because because it is amazing. But the rocks I'm going to use are Siriu stone, mainly because it's a big tank. I've got a lot of it dotted about and I can do something really cool with it. It's a classic. It's something that you guys can easily get hold of. Well, I assume you can easily get hold of as well. And it goes with everything. Right, just chuck those in initially just to see how it's sitting. Two things I'm thinking don't look right. Hopefully you'll agree with me. I need something a little bit higher there. And also this one here, I know it follows the sort of bulkiness. I kind of feel like I need to flip it or something, like it needs to take a downward turn rather than going upwards again. Unless maybe I'll come out a little bit further here with a smaller one. Yeah, that could work. Because we need to keep that sort of view that it's going that way. If it's all doing that, I don't know, it's just going to... Maybe look at maybe I'm thinking about it too much. I'm just gonna keep going because that's always served me well in the past. Keep chucking stuff in and moving it around. So I think that's a cool start. There's gonna be different levels to this. Um, at the moment, look, we've just got that gravelly bit at the bottom. Now, ordinarily or other times, I have put some axle into media bags, you know, little uh, perforated bags, laid them on top, and then put a cap in sand. If I do that now, I'm probably not going to have much room to plant into. So I'm just going to sprinkle on some more aqua soil on top, just like I did in the previous time when I did this scape for the ecosystem. Um, and that should provide enough nutrients then moving forwards. It does mean I run the risk of it sort of coming forwards into the, I'm going to do like a neat foreground in this one. Um, but, you know, I don't think it will. Hopefully it won't anyway. I'll still be capping the, these aqua soil. I'll just sprinkle some now in all the areas at the back and all the sort of pockets you can see as well, because if it fills in those gaps, we can then put plants in there as well. And oh, that looked great. <laughs> okay, sweet. Now we've got all of our nutrients taken care of. I want to cap on top of that with some coarse sand. 
Uh, it's not the finishing sand, we've got that to come after, but first of all, yeah, cap it with the coarse sand and we can plant into that then, and then the roots will find their way down into all the nutrients and it's all locked in and you won't get algae, hopefully, fingers crossed, please don't get algae. <laughs> So that is everything kind of sealed, if you like. Sealed, I don't know why I'm doing that, but you know, it's not sealed, but it is. And now it's time on top of that, I can put our decorative sand, which is well, quite a lot more lighter than that. Right, I feel like we've got a really strong start there. Remember, everything could still be moved. So don't panic if you're not happy. I mean, I am quite happy, I have to say. These little sort of, pathways are looking great. I can already see the wood. So I want the wood coming mainly across. I think that should look brilliant. I can even put some more rocks in if I want, but I want lots of plants in this top area and then like open, just this massive open gap where they can all swim in. Should look so good. I'm gonna start chucking some wood in. Perfect thing is all the wood's gonna sink because we've just taken it out. Right, did you see what I did there? I swapped around those two pieces because that other one was too big, merging, didn't have any sort of interest then. So I've got a lot of big pieces and we must, as aquascapers, resist the temptation to just use all of it for no reason. I don't need a huge amount of hardscape in this tank. I just need it to be frameworked to attach Java ferns from. I want a lot of Java ferns in individual sort of sections, if you like. So like that one piece in the middle is enough. That one piece there, probably enough. Maybe something else, just a little bit coming up there. And then I need something coming up here and then that's it. I don't need any more than that. Like I say, I want a lot of open swimming space and this whole foreground area, can I come to the side? Yeah, look, that whole, oh, this sounds weird. <laughs> this whole foreground area, tons of swimming room. Now we're gonna need that because obviously angelfish are a lot bigger as they grow than the nanos that I've been keeping in here. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. It's not gonna be long now, is it? Finish off this wood. Yeah, loving that. I'm just gonna leave it at that. It looks like we've got sort of that action. Maybe bring this down a little bit and then we've got a slope down to there. Leave that space at the back there. Some plants can grow there, whatever. I don't wanna overcrowd it all, do we? Because this it's a great framework currently. Absolutely loving it. So ordinarily, I would need to glue these pieces of wood into place because they'd be bone dry and just float. These are all actually not only locked in, like I've sort of crammed them into, luckily they've locked, and they're also waterlogged, so they're not gonna float anyway, so we're all good. Next up, it's time to start planting. Oh, the fun bit. So I'm gonna start with the epiphyte plants, ones that attach to decor, so rocks and wood. And I'm gonna start on the wood, I think, because that's a, uh, it's gonna be one of those that I build as I go. I'm not sure yet where. Thinking big focal point there, maybe up there, and just dotted along in sort of like specific places that I'm not specifying at the moment. Does, no, <laughs> I don't know, I'm just gonna do it. So I managed to save some awesome pieces of trident fern and there's a lovely big bit of moss, that big moss ball, I managed to save that as well. Um, a few stems as well, actually I'll show you them. So I put them over here in my cherry barb tank Look how good they look just sat there because this was like an all green scape and now it's got some color. I mean, I will take them out, but looks cool, doesn't it? But yeah, to attach the Trident Fern, as always, cyanoacrylate super glue gel works a treat. Or you can um, tie it on as well with cotton thread, but I've got so much to do here that the glue is just going to be perfect. There we go, our first piece. It's already coming alive. Done. That's it. That's all I'm doing. No. As if, <laughs> let's just keep going. Okay, I'm getting excited, we're looking good. I might just fill it up with water if I'm honest because the rest of the stuff I wanna put in is either gonna be planted into the substrate, in which case it's like a stem plant and I like doing that when there's water in there. Just personal preference really, I can see where they're all sitting, I, I just like doing that. And then the other thing is like Anubius and things like that, small little plants, I'll attach to rocks anyway and just place them where they need to go. Moss as well, oh that, that big moss piece. 
I'll do that first and then I'll fill up with water. I'm thinking it's gonna look great on one of these, but which one? Maybe I can put it over a few. Yeah, I'll put it over a few and definitely need to keep on top of it though. <laughs> Yeah, that is what I'm talking about. Mature moss like that, that you can just lift up and put into another tank, instantly gives your tank that aged look. Like that looks like it's been there for like a thousand, no, that's an exaggeration, a, a while, okay? <laughs> I'm just thinking now that over here, this Java fern has seen better days. That was all sort of hidden underneath the clump. So it's not had much light to it. So you can see it's a little bit sort of yellowy compared to the rest, but that will fix itself in no time at all. I also need a piece up there if I'm honest as well. So for me, that's looking great and now it's time to fill it up. Like I say, I like doing the next stage uh, with water in. It can cause some cloudiness and things like that, but nothing a quick water change won't fix or just switching the filter on to be honest and putting some finer filter floss and cleans it in no time. Just really like, oh, I just turned around with all the lights off. It looks so good. I just really like filling everything up now and planting. It also means you don't have to rush at all because you know, you've got water in there and if it runs over to a second day, you need to go home, then that's okay as well. Right, so we're filled up and the background has kind of, you know, it's not gone how I wanted, look. It's got that sort of shadowy area to it, which I completely forgot obviously happens. When you fill the water up, it doesn't look the same as when you haven't got it there because the light's got to travel through it. Now there's a few options we can do. We can try and paint the back, which I think is the best option to be honest, because look, I've done it here on my uh, freshwater reef aquarium and it looks great, doesn't it? Much more vibrant versus that sort of dull look. Or I've got some card, I'm just gonna put some card up against the back, see if that makes a difference. No, it's not really doing anything there, is it, if I'm honest? Yeah, so I think I'm gonna go with paint in the background. It's possible that this could go wrong, but I should be okay because there's not a huge gap. Um, let's take a look. We <laughs> There's enough to get a roller down the side from the top, and then I might have to get an extension to go to the bottom, but it'll work. It'll take some rolls to be fair, but um, I think it'll be worth it in the long run. So the paint I'm gonna be using is just normal emulsion that you'd use on a ceiling or your walls, just a brilliant white. Now it does stick fine after quite a few coats, uh, but if you scratch it, it'll obviously come off, but there'll be no reason for it to be scratched, will there? This isn't as bright as it's looking, by the way, hang on. It's more like how I'm actually seeing it. Lots of white. <laughs> it won't be though, because we're putting more detail and everything else in. Okay, okay, it's starting to get there. I'm at a predicament, because that's as far as I can reach. <laughs> I need to put an extension on the brush, I think, so I can go a little bit further. Right, the whole back has been painted now. It looks patchy, but that's just where some bits are dry, some bits are still wet. As the video goes on, you'll notice it's going to all go clear. I'll probably add another um, layer as well, just to make sure that everything's covered. But I really like the effect now. It looks way better than before because there's no defining line in the background, you know what I mean? Which spoilt the sort of uh, depth illusion or neatness, if you like, with just that big shadow line we had before. But what I'm gonna do now is just take out a load of the water. I've decided I want way more plants in specific areas. Again, not in the middle. We're keeping the middle bit open, but we need more down the bottom here. And I need more on that branch. I've just got a few more ideas. I found some more plants as well that I forgot I had that I wanna add in. Right, here's what I've got. I've got some windel off, which is already on some wood. It's got a suction cup as well, if you wanna stick it to the glass. This comes from Tropica, and I've also got a trident right there. It's quite dark in this corner. Um, and then I've got a narrow as well. So I'm gonna put the narrow up in that big section where I want it there. Uh, the, the, uh, the other trident and windel off will come down in this section here, because we need more in that sort of part, I feel like. There we go, we've got much more green over in that corner, much more green in this corner, so big sections. In a big tank, you need big focal points, and that's why I've gone for that. Again, I've still resisted the temptation to fill out the middle. <laughs> it's gonna look so good with the fish swimming across there, isn't it? But what I do wanna do is plant in this little section down here, this little ledge we've got, Liliopsis brasiliensis, and I've got some down here 
in one of my storage tanks. Oh, you can't see it very well, but I've got three pots of it down there, and I've got its like sort of sister or brother here as well, which is Liliopsis maruritians. Yeah, that one. <laughs> So I'm back to the stage where I was before. I'm struggling to sort of see how it's all going to sit. Fill it back up again. Right, we filled up nicely. I also put another coat on the background area. Really starting to look good now. I want to start planting the background plants, the taller ones that are going to go in the flow. But I want to put the filter in first because then we can see where the flow is going. Okay, so we've got good flow that's not bombarding that Java fern, just a tiny bit on the edge. It's creating good surface agitation as well, look, which means we're gonna get great gas exchange. Over this side, I can see that the flow isn't horrendously high, which is brilliant because it means everything isn't gonna get blown around. So far, so good, that's just about right. And for background plants, I'm gonna go for these tall ones you can see back here. It's like a long grassy plant. It looks so good in, uh, in flow. This is Cyprus Helferi, Helferi. Something like that. Um, here you go, it's that. <laughs> yeah, that's just working really well in my opinion. I think that looks great. Um, and you know what they say, if you're gonna do dual island, you wanna do similar plants on both sides or it can look a little bit odd, even if it's like way less, just a hint of it. So I'm gonna get some in that back corner and in that front bit there. It'll probably flow a little bit strange, but you need to see those different sort of color variations of green for it to work and just tie it all in nicely together. Oh, I think that's just looking so good. It's, it's turned out better than I would have thought. Like usually, I'd be so tempted to start putting loads of Anubius in the foreground gaps, Booster Philandra, fill in that dark area, but I, I wanna keep it kind of realistic looking, do you know what I mean? I think it'll look really good keeping just the greens, um, and then when we put the fish in, they're gonna pop like crazy. How good would like 50 Cardinal Tetras or even Neons actually look good in here with the Angels? But um, one thing I do wanna do, see that little gap behind where the filter is? Um, this is a little pocket there you're not really gonna see. I'm gonna stick a load of Lim the Feeler in there, which is a very fast growing stem plant. I'll just put it in a little ceramic ring and dunk it down the back there. That will just soak up any excess nutrients from the start phase, and it will just massively reduce the chances of getting algae. Right, I really wanna go and get the fish now, but first of all, we need to do a little bit of drying up on the stand for the tank. And to be honest, I'll just paint it again. It's easier than cleaning it, isn't it? And then we can put our plants back up and that should sort of finish the look. This is huge. Okay, it's not quite where I want it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need to get a cane, I think, to sort of prop it up so it's like that. Ha <laughs> ha, success. So I've sacrificed one, a piece of wood that I'm probably not gonna use. It wasn't a very nice piece. Propping the whole thing up looking great and massive there. Uh, I've also placed some of the roots that come out. Look, you see that sort of running root? That's in the water. There's three prongs in the water there going down the back. So hopefully I won't even have to water it. I mean, I will for a bit, but you know, eventually they send out sort of like root, like rooty roots, roots on the roots that suck up water fast. And I need to plant this side. This should be fine. Yeah. So it has now been 24 hours. The tank is looking so good. Now we can go and pick up the fish. But before we do, I just want to quickly show you everything. Look at how good it's looking. So all the air bubbles are now gone, thanks to the uh, water being pushed around. Uh, we've got some really nice plants, haven't we? They look so fresh and vibrant. The background look has all sort of gone the same color everywhere, <laughs> not patchy at all. We're really ready to go. I have left the foreground quite plain. Now in other times, I've sprinkled like detail stones and that around the edges. And for this one, I just want to go for like that sort of real natural bit. Is it natural or is it unnatural? I don't know. 
I suppose natural would be like the small stones, but this is a certain look. It's quite common in the sort of ADA style tanks where they have that real definite borderline between uh, the hardscape and that open foreground. It's quite impactful, isn't it? Because if you look at that versus this one here, it's a completely different look, isn't it? I'd say this is more natural looking and I'd say this one is more sort of I don't know, modern looking sort of thing you might see as a display, I would suggest in a house or something like that, like a, a modern, you know, glass everywhere, bit of wood and then boom, this. That looks so good. I'm definitely gonna do that in my next house. <laughs> but anyway, enough of this jibber jabber. Let's go get the fish. We are back at our favorite shop, Made Ahead Aquatics in Wellington. We're here now, so <laughs> I've, I've got to go for the famous person. I hate it when he's on the phone and not ready for me. <laughs> Cheers, mate, buddy. Good morning. All right. Not How's bad going? yourself? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> So Matthew, you know why I'm here. You've yep. already sent me the pictures. Yes. Thank yep. you very much for that, by the way. It got yep. me very excited. We would like to collect the angelfish and possibly a school as well or something. Hopefully yeah. you've got some cardinals or neons or- Yeah, we've got all of that. I just think yeah. they'll go great. Yeah. It's classic, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. Proper like, proper old school tank. I like it. Yeah. And I've just got all green plants. So I think, you know, the blues that's in the angels. Yep. Can you pronounce the name of the angels for me as well? In fact, let's oh, go over there. Let's go, yeah, go on them. Round that way. Ooh, yeah. that was a fast spin. Um, so yeah, they're, um, they're Pinoy Blue Angels. Pinoy? Pinoy. Okay. Um, so yeah, they're here. Yes. Oh, yes. So you can see the blue starting to come up in them now. Um, some of them have got that really cool pearl scale effect as well. So they've got like glittery scales, which is really cool. Yes, I like that. Yeah. I had a whole fish that was that before. Yeah. Um, but these are wicked. They're only little, look. Um, which is good because I want to see them grow to be honest and it means we can get a good bunch you did say to me because I asked Matt how many should I get and you said it'd be a good idea to get about 10 of those to yep. start with and then they'll pair up and then we can sort of decide what should and shouldn't come out that kind of thing exactly yeah you can work out then what numbers you want in the tank which ones are paired which ones are bullies and yeah you can really work out and get a nice group of them finalized then when you when they grow up wicked I mean I don't think we're seeing the best of them at the moment, are we? Because it's quite, yeah. you're right over this side, it's a little bit dull. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot of blue. It's just, it's hard to pick up. Yeah, it's, it's a good. really tricky color to pick up on those guys. It'll show easier my tank, I think. Especially, Especially with the green. Yeah, the yeah. green. And then I've got two, two decent uh, powered lights on the top as well. So. Nice. Okay, yeah, and then I'm thinking, have we got anything for schooling as well? We have got cardinals, yeah? Yep, we've got cardinals. Oh, yes. So, I need a hundred, no, <laughs> that wouldn't yeah. be a good start. It would be an amazing shot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, we've got... Key run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got some cardinals. Yes, we've got loads, okay. So, yeah, they look fantastic. They've been here a while? Yeah. All good? Yeah, they've been here, probably three, four weeks now, so finished quarantine and way through the other side. Oh, and there's also some rummies I'm seeing. Yeah, we've got some rummies top and middle there. Oh, you've got loads of, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, loads of rummies as well. Shall we go classic? Go classic. Should we do, should we do 2020? Nice. It's like a four it. foot tank. Yeah. 2020s, you're going to get so much, like, I mean, card, um, sorry, rummy knows they school, like the best schooling fish I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, it's just so cool as well. And they're a great indicator for you as well, because their noses go more pale when there's something not quite right in the water is that right yeah they just a little bit stressed and they'll just sort of start to lose that coloration in them so yeah, yeah it's always worth watching and seeing how they're reacting to everything really oh sweet oh, i'm well excited for that okay so 20 of those 20 of those and then 10 of the angels i think i was going to do corys but we'll wait because that's, that's plenty of fish to start with i'm going to have to be doing quite a lot of water changes because it's a new setup yeah. with that amount of fish anyway but i'm up for it it's absolutely fine <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Now Matt, you've just told me something interesting has happened over with the stingrays, haven't you? Yeah, so um, our, our female's been pregnant for a little while now. Okay. Um, and she wasn't dropping. And then a day ago, our female. Okay, so, so these two here, these are our two females. So our male's over on the left, the male's a darker boy over there. Yeah. Just um, for size reference, look guys, there's my hand. They're yeah. big old fish, these. And you might need the ladder, actually, too far. I moved it out of the way. But in this little basket up here... Oh, it's in the basket? Yeah, we just oh. popped them in the basket. Oh, for safety. I'm yeah. holding on. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, look. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're still massive. Yeah, they're still quite big. You know, well, when you think the size of mother... I'm not putting my hands in, I'm just putting them there for reference. So cute. Yeah. I mean, 
I've always said this, imagine if you could get them this small and stay that small. Oh, it'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? But unfortunately, well not unfortunately, but you know, yeah. uncommonly, <laughs> you need a tank this big. Yeah. Uh, oh, that shovel nose there, isn't it? Yep, Is that shovel yep. nose? They're, um, yes. Yeah small shovel noses so they're not the ones that grow absolutely enormous pretty much the size you get there is fully grown oh my goodness i just spotted that pleco at the back oh yeah whoa that's an adonis pleco he's huge yeah he's a bit of a chunk awesome looking though. he's been in there since he was the size of my thumb really yep how many years uh it'll be oh, just smashed the glass around 2010 20 yeah it must have been around 2010 that he went in there i reckon <laughs> awesome okay <laughs> Yeah, this bag up, I've got to get going because it's actually Mother's Day. Yep. So I've got to get the fish in and everything like that. And then we're going out for some Sunday lunch. So Sounds like a plan. That's why I'm here already. <laughs> get better, better getting bagged up. Yeah. So Matt's just said something which makes sense. Like if we had full adult, you know, angels going in, then these size would probably be way too small. They're going to get snacked on. <laughs> yeah. But because the angels are small and these are also small, by the time the angels are grown, these will be double in size, you know, and within a year they're going to all be doubled so it's all sort of evenly growing together we should be safe shouldn't we Matt yeah we'll be safe it's fine like I say if you were to drop them in with fully grown it might be a problem but yeah when you're growing them all up together they sort of see fish as friends not food then yeah it's, they're all going to be eating the same food as well so I'll be doing like a high protein for the um, for the for the angels as well just basically like like I was with a discus and they'll grow fast so fast like my, I've got some cardinals in my home tank and some uh, rummy nose, and they are so much thicker than this. There's no way an angel would be eating them. <laughs> So we are back with the fish. First thing you need to do is turn the light off. Uh, we don't want to blind them and scare them. Lay the fish in the top. They'll get used to my temperature because they've been in the car, which is quite warm. It's probably colder than the car. Now they're all sort of quarantining themselves because they're all from the same place, brand new tank. So there's no need to separate. Having said that, the fish shot's really good. And they always tell me how long fish have been there, to see any signs of this and that. And to be honest, if there's any problems, they don't sell them. So we're all good, we can put them all straight in. Oh yeah, just a quick one. I've also added some more bunches of uh, pearl weed. Uh, just, I was a bit, little bit worried that we didn't have enough sort of fast growing stems to help with the initial phase, the startup phase. We're not gonna get any algae now, I just know it. There's just loads and loads of stem plants all grown in other tanks and put in here. Now some of you might be thinking, well we can't do that, we haven't got that many plants. Well, just if you've got a couple of tanks, don't ever throw out plants. I always just, whenever I trim them, like put them together in a bunch and put them in somewhere else. So I've always got stuff to hand to be able to create new tanks that just look so full and thick straight away. One light, two lights. I'm gonna have to roll these lights backwards a bit because I haven't got much room at all. There we go. Angels there. I think we've got the angels in two bags because Matt says it's, it's a good idea just to put five and five. Yeah, that's right, yep. They're quite chilled. Bit flustered, but they'll be okay. And then we've got the rummy nose and there's the cardinal tetras. Sweet. Right, we'll give them about 20 minutes or so and then we can put them all in. Like I said in the shop, there's quite a few fish there for a new setup. So we'll be doing water changes daily, water testing daily, and also adding beneficial bacteria daily as well. If you're not willing to do all that work, then do not do it this way. Do the standard way of cycling tanks. Um, I've also got sponges from other tanks, so I'll be squeezing them into here as well. That's after I've made the video though, because obviously it'll muddy the water, but it'll actually cycle the tank instantly as well. But for the purpose of the video, that would just be horrible. <laughs> But like I say, yeah, if you've got two tanks running, really good way of cycling a tank is just, say if I went over here, just took out the sponge from that one, just put it in here and just squeezed all the gunk everywhere. It just, it makes a mess, but cycles so, so fast. Really good way of doing it. To be honest, as many of you already know, I heat the whole room. So just keeping the bags in the room would actually temperature acclimate them. But you know, this would be quicker probably, maybe. I don't know. They're, they're there, they're doing it, it's fine. Okay, exciting, exciting. It's been 20 minutes, the lights are now back on. We can put the fish in, let's do this. Right, I tell you what, let's put in the neons first. It's always good to see a group of neons, isn't it? Go away. There we go, a little bit shocked some of them, but yeah, they're all moving, all good. Quality control check, everyone's looking healthy. Coloring up very quickly as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 10 minutes or so, they're gonna look awesome. Right, next up, let's put the rummy nose tetra in as well. And here we go then, the greatest schooling fish of all time, the rummy nose tetra. Oh wait, oh, we've got a bad one, catch it now. No, oh, no, maybe not. Stunned? He was just stunned, he's fine. Yay, he's fine, <laughs> good lad, yes. 
there we go. It's just a little bit of shock, you know, going from the bag and then out. They're all open swimming, absolutely fine. Zero casualties, awesome. And for the grand finale, we have got the angels. I've put them in this glass because I didn't want any of their fins getting caught on the net. There you go. All of you go. We <laughs> look at that. Awesome. Yes. Okay, so they are tiddlers, but it's, I think that's a really good thing. We can watch them grow, get them chunky. We're gonna feed them really well. And remember guys, now is the time to add our beneficial bacteria. I use Quick Start from API. It's never ever done me wrong. I'm gonna do a couple of capfuls in there. And then in the morning, all the fish can be coloured up. I'm gonna be monitoring the water conditions as well and see what we need to do. Well, it's the next day, look, I've come in. Everything seems absolutely perfect. We've got the cardinals over in this section, rummy nose cone left and right, which is pretty much what they do all day. Big collection of the angels here, and I'm right up close here, look, they're not even worried. So we've got, what have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's number eight. I did see two more tucked at the back. Um, I did count 10 when I first come in, so we're all good. It appears that all the other fish are doing fine as well. There's not been any casualties, which is brilliant. I mean, you wouldn't expect casualties, would you? But normally when you have a big load going in together, I mean, probability alone says that you know, a couple wouldn't make it from shock, but yeah, we're all good, we're brilliant. Now, is the water brilliant though? Because it's now been, what, 18 hours since I put them in. So let's have a test to see how we're doing. It should be okay, remember, because this filter was being used previously, so it's got a load of media in there that's uh, cycled, if you like, and also the uh, substrate system as well has been reused, which, yes, some of it would have died off, but some of the beneficial bacterials should, you know, all still be good. But we need to test it to make sure anyway. There we go, testing complete. We're showing no ammonia, no nitrite. We are all good. I mean, I could test nitrate and all that, but it's not gonna be built up within 18 hours. Um, but it's a good sign to show that there's a decent amount of fish in there. They're gonna be producing a fair bit of waste, but that substrate system and the uh, filter are already doing their job. So if you were to start this tank though, like me, a big one, put in this many fish, you would 100% need to just be doing at least a 50% water, water change right now if you didn't have the filter and the system like I did. But to be honest, if I didn't have that, I wouldn't put this many fish in. I would start with like five angels and a couple of probably the rummy nose or something like that. It's only because I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm willing to test, I'm willing to change the water. You know, I've got a lot of experience now that I can put this many in and we're all good. Oh look, some of the cardinals hiding in the back bit there as well. That's good to know. That's probably gonna be a little safe haven for them. And who knows, we could even get some breeding going on. It's really highly unlikely that any babies are gonna survive, especially with the angels being like ferocious little uh, hunters. They don't look at the moment, do they? But those sparkles look really coming out on the fish. Every single one of them has got these cool sparkles all on the side. Look at that one. It's like diamonds. 